Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. I wanted to chat with you, talk with you about a principle that I discovered actually early on when I was practicing alternate picking. And that was the, the principle of focus and concentration when it comes to what you're actually practicing. Because what I was practicing in the beginning when I started out and really wanted to learn this technique was I was just practicing scale shapes basically. Um, so I was playing three note per string, scale shapes up and down, and I thought, what a, what a great chance to, to uh, get to know all the, the three note per string scale shapes of the, the minor slash major scale, also known as the diatonic scale, and then just play them up and down endlessly, you know, uh, to, 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 to learn alternate picking and to learn the scale shapes. But I didn't know that I didn't really learn the scale shapes in a way that I could use effectively, but that's another story. And the challenge of alternate picking was the hardest one ever, you know, picking all six strings, moving your hand down as you pick, doing ups and downs and uh, uh, inside and string shifts and outside string, all kinds of little challenges there. And that's the point of, of this whole video, is that you need to focus. You need to get it your exercises to a point where it's the same thing you do over and over and over again. And the reason why that is so effective is that it gives the brain a chance to really learn, to really take the, that little one or two challenges and then work on them over and over again. And when I say over and over again, I mean thousands and hundreds of thousands and even millions of times just feeding it the same information, the same challenge. And so a good alternate picking exercise, for instance, could be just to play two strings and play uh, six notes up, like, like that. Because what happens here, instead of I have to move my hand from string to string, all six strings, and I have to figure out how to do that and having, uh, you know, about the same position to the string all the way up, uh, and, and, and going down again and doing both outside string shifts, which is, you know, going down on a string like the B string and then up on the high E string, that would be an outside string shift or inside string shift going up on the B string and then down on the high E string. Uh, I have to do both of those instead of that. I start with a downstroke, I get an outside string shift, and then I'm, I'm playing first down, up, down, and then up, down, up. So I have that alternating between, so I have basically three challenges here, which is quite a lot already, so we don't need to add to that. And I might want to even start with just playing one string, so I skip the, the whole string shifting process there, because that's a challenge in and of itself. So I just play one string, for instance, three notes and then I can alternate and say okay I'll play two strings now but that's as high as I went and I actually went a little bit more you know I played that kind of thing for months <laughs> to get that down uh, because what that does in your brain is, as I said, it, it's a little loop that has the exact same challenges all the time. And that is really a, a place for the brain to learn what to do there. Because this is not a matter of the brain learning a bunch of information. It's about learning how to do it correctly, how to do it right, how to do it so it fe you feel in control and you're accurate and the notes come out really clear and loud and in, in the exact fashion you want them to. And so what the brain actually does in that process is that each and every time you do it right and it comes out right and it feels right, you get a little pleasure. You actually get a little release of endorphins in your brain, which is uh, which feels a little, bit, a little bit like morphine, which is a, a pleasure drug. It really feels good. 
Uh, just a little bit, of course. And every time you don't, you you have an inaccuracy, or you, you you're, it's not like, oh that, oh, that wasn't really, or you feel out of control, your brain goes towards releasing other hormones that does not feel as, as good. And so it teaches itself, by the use of pain and pleasure, to, to do more of what feels good, and to do less of what doesn't feel good. And you are the judge of that. So as you focus on what you're doing, and, and do your little lubable exercise, the brain gets a chance to say, oh, that was good, oh, that wasn't so good, uh, that was good, and it's the same challenge every single time. So it can adjust and say, okay, that felt that way. And and because this, these movements that you're making are so minute, so small, so you can't really analyze on the basis of visuals and, and look at it and say, oh, oh, my pick went a little too far there, went a little too up, and it, it has to be a feeling kind of thing. And that's exactly the same thing. Remember, just imagine that you're trying to, to learn to, to, to put a ball through the hoop uh, in basketball, right? The way to learn that is really to feel each shot from the same place on the, on the field every single time. And once it goes through the hoop, what the brain does there is that it immediately tries to say, okay, what happened? How did that feel? How much power did I put to the ball? How fast, how tall, how did that feel, basically? And it, it tries to store all of that, inf that feeling information in your body so it can do it again. If you are conscious and very aware of what goes on, not conscious perhaps, but focused on the feeling of the throw each and every time. Most of us does that completely unconsciously. But, but that's what's going on. So each time you're doing it right, it's like, ah, oh, let's store that. Let's store that pattern of movement. And the next time you do, the, the brain tries to replicate that, ah, oh, that feeling. And it might not even be able to do that, but that's what it's trying. So each and every time you get it right, you get a learning experience that says, oh, that was right. Each and every time you do it wrong or you don't hit the hoop, then the body goes, oh, that wasn't the right feeling. And so you store good feelings over here and say, success, success, try to do this, try to do this. And then all the others, and that's how the brain works. And the exact same thing happens here because you can't really analyze your way completely to doing it or learning it. If you could, I would be able to tell you what to do and then pretty, you know, a week later, you'll be able to do it. But that's not how it works, because this, this is so... First of all, it's really alien to the body, these minute little movements here. And being able to do that. Um, so it has to really learn this. And secondly... You can't really analyze your way to, to doing it, because you have to feel your way into it. How deep do you, do you need to pick? How, how close do the, does the pig need to be from the body into the string? It depends. It's a matter of feeling, right? And the only way, I, the only reason why I can control this, see, I'm, I'm putting it deeper in towards the guitar every time I'm picking louder. But I never lose the string. I can play as as shallowly as I want, because it's a feeling in my head. I'm not looking at the pick. I do, I'm just feeling the brain is sensing how much resistance it has to the string, and then it knows we don't need to go any farther away from the body now. I'm, I don't, I'm not missing a note, and, and that's not genius. That's just experience, and experience means that I've been doing it so much that the brain has simply learned what that feels like, and so that's what you need to do here as well. And the only way to teach your brain that kind of thing is to have small, loopable exercises where the brain basically returns to the same challenge, that same downstroke on that first note of those six notes or three notes that same string shift in the same direction on the same two strings. Actually, also, in, on the same area of the fretboard. Because the second you, you know, you can play an exercise up here on the two lighter strings, the, the B and E string, then you can play on the two middle strings. But as soon as you do that, the strings change. You have, perhaps you have a rounded, or you probably do, a D string, and that's totally different from those uh, skinny uh, B and E string. And so the whole thing changes, but not that much, you might say. No, but, because, but this is minute little changes and a minute uh, way of building skills. So just that little change of having two new strings is really a new challenge. So if you go all over the place, if you say, okay, I have my little six note, and I'm going to do that, 
all over the fretboard, I'm going to go from one to the other. You're really shooting yourself in the foot there because you don't want to change the challenge all the time. You want to remain having the same challenge and then you want to obsess about that challenge. You want to, you want to really, you know, uh, show up with an army to deal with that much, right? Instead of showing up with an army to deal with a huge load of, of string thickness and holding your hand in different ways also, because the strings are placed in different places on the neck, right? Or, or the guitar here. So, so that's going to uh, really complicate things for you. But, but then you might say, but am I not supposed to learn to play all the strings? What's the deal here? Am I not supposed to learn to play, you know, six strings up and down? Yes, but this is the way to learn that. This is the fastest way of getting to learning that whole, you know, that oh, that's too much, most of us would say, if we really face that huge load of being able to play all kinds of stuff with alternate picking. It seems enormous. So how do you ever, you know, uh, learn to do all that? You know, not, not, not only play uh, just up and down, but you, you have play sequences and put them together. What you do is, and this is the whole key of rapid progress, and, and most people don't do this at all. Uh, because it seems counterintuitive, but it's not. It's really the best, and it is counterintuitive, but, but it's the best, most efficient way of doing it. And it's the principle of mastery. You learn one thing to the point where it's absolutely, completely easy. And when I say easy, it's effortless. You don't even, you don't use any brain power to do it. It's just... You know, you're not, you're not thinking about it anymore. It's like a spasm in your hand, so you can talk and do other stuff while you're doing it. And, and at that point, you have mastery. And you can build mastery pretty rapidly if you just take one little exercise and just do that. Right. And then stay with it. Stay on the same neck with the same two strings. Once you are a master of that, it will be so much easier. And I, I'm, I'm not kidding here. It will be a walk in the park learning to do the same thing on the bottom two strings or the middle two strings. But mastery is everything because once you have that little just playing six notes, everything will open up to you in a totally new way. Every other alternate picking discipline or challenge will look so much smaller um, and will be so much more manageable to learn.